Hello everybody, welcome to Red Elevator. I'm Nina Takish and today we are in the flats of Beverly Hills at a client's house whose living room we just completed and we are going to look at how this was done. We are at one of my beautiful clients' homes in the flats of Beverly Hills. For those of you who don't know where the flats are, it's probably one of the most coveted areas in, not only in Beverly Hills, but really in the world. It is an area rich with beautiful architecture, whether it be Regency from Dorothy Draper days, or whether it's mid-century or beautiful Tudor homes. Beverly Hills is full of history, and I was so pleased to be able to design this home. And today we're gonna to look at the beautiful living room designed by yours truly. My client wanted a space that was very serene, very calming, because she has a very busy life with two beautiful children, and therefore, this was a place where her family could gather, where her friends could gather, and it could be really a place to just forget about the day's hard work and come and relax. So we started, of course, with this rug, which is really beautiful, and it has those wonderful gray tones. We didn't go on a blue-gray hunt. We went on more of a beige-gray hunt, which is called beige. The term beige is fairly new in the design world, and what it really means is that it's a combination of beige and gray, so it is not so cold. It has the warmth and it has the neutrality of gray. So we started with this beautiful gray rug that we had to have. And then our next big question was, what sofa are we gonna choose? Once we knew what sofa we were gonna choose, everything fell into place together. Our color choices for this room, as I mentioned, were grayish, crisp white, nickel, and polished nickel, I should say, with a little bit of color. So in choosing our couch, we did a very wonderful, beautiful, stain-resistant perennial fabric. We actually got this from Restoration Hardware, and we specified that we wanted the polished nickel feet on this couch. The reason we wanted that is that we wanted everything to be homogenous, we wanted it to be very calming, and we just wanted everything to look seamless, and that is exactly what we achieved here. In the choices of our pillows, we did different textures, Again, staying in the same family and showing the contrast between the white, which pops, and these beautiful gray beige pillows. One thing that I get a lot of questions about is how many pillows does one put on a sofa? Believe me, it is a science. And I always say less in terms of pillow is more. Today, we are doing less pillows. 10 years ago, we were doing a lot of pillows. And the reason is that you don't wanna start fighting with your pillows, especially when you have friends over and they need to sit down, you don't want them to be uh, rustling the pillows. So my idea is always to put two on the right, two on the left, depending on the length of the couch, but in a standard size, or this is a little bit bigger than standard size um, sofa, you wanna put two. I always insist on getting down feathered pillows. And the reason is that I always like to have this wonderful, what I call Jack Nicholson stabbing moment, where you literally stab your pillow as if you were in The Shining and you get this beautiful form that fits on the pillow. Then when you can sit on this couch, you will see that it's a place for you to place your arm. It looks decorative. You cannot have foam in these pillows. They absolutely have to be feather filled. If you feel that two pillows on each side is not enough, and sometimes that's the case, what you can do is put a center pillow, which I love doing. On most of my sofas, I either have a bolster, which is what is also known as a neck roll, or you have a rectangular pillow. This rectangular pillow is cute. It fits beautifully in between the two pillows, and it really gives a sense of balance. And I do like to keep it in the same color as the sofa so that it doesn't become too choppy. As you guys know, I love pairing chairs. First of all, I'm obsessed with chairs, but I love pairing chairs in a living room 
um, certainly in this situation where we have a very sort of clean, minimal look. The architecture of this home is quite traditional. So although the house has been fully updated, we love to sort of mix things up as you guys know. So if you have a traditional home and you bring in some transitional pieces, it really looks great and fresh and modern. And uh, this is exactly what we were able to achieve here. When it comes to chairs, as I mentioned, Again, we love, especially my client and I, love acrylic. Acrylic feet are great, they're timeless. They were born probably in the late 60s, early 70s, when it started to really take the world by storm, when all these beautiful acrylic pieces were being introduced. So we wanted to introduce some of those beautiful 70s elements in this house. This is also restoration hardware. Links for these items will be in our description down below so you guys can look at where to get these pieces. But again, we picked the nickel finish. We did a very, 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 very light grayish on these. So probably not sure if you can see it on your screen, but these are actually a very mild grayish. They have a very beautiful soft um, velvet on them. I always like to mix fabric. So if we're going with a linen sofa, as we just looked at a perennial fabric, which means it wears well, if you pour wine, it'll come off. But if you do a linen, I always like to juxtapose it, my favorite word in design, with velvet. So this velvet is soft to the touch. It doesn't feel rich and, and heavy. It feels rich and light and beautiful. This room is fairly large, so we wanted a very large, round coffee table where the client could serve her, her family members and her friends and be able to put a lot of great items on the coffee table from flowers to fruits and, and all sorts of different nuts and decorative items, so it was important that we designed something that was bespoke that really fit this room. Again, we have a very square, or shall I say rectangular sofa. We've got square edges on the chairs, and so therefore the coffee table needed to be round. We wanted to tie in the coffee table with the piano, which later you'll see in this room, so that it picks up some of the black. And this is a beautiful bespoke marble table that we designed where the legs essentially intersect in a way that is very sharp, it's very modern and very beautiful, and it really turned out exactly as we wanted it to. We were lucky enough that this home had a very beautiful carved marble French fireplace in it. And so again, it gave us the great format and um, the great bones to create an incredible living room. But what we did do, what the client did was she bought these lovely little round spheres that she put in the fireplace where when it lights up, it's very sort of different and modern and really a great juxtaposition for the fireplace. Again, if you have something that's a little bit more ornate, maybe you bring in a modern element. Speaking of juxtapositions, we source this gorgeous painting for my client, which has a lot of special meaning to her and her family. So this looks wonderful in the room. As you can see, it just so happens that this piece, which we fell in love with, has a touches of those colors that are in the living room. Again, things don't have to be bright and loud for you to notice them. They can be subtle. And when you have subtle touches, for example, the color of this painting, that is picked up in the velvet of the chair, the room really comes together and looks very, very designer and very beautiful. Symmetry is very important, so we wanted to bring in different elements to the right and to the left of the fireplace that were identical, but slightly different. So we picked out these beautiful lucite tables and put something really fun on them. This is an objet that we found, and then on the other side, of the fireplace, we have, again, the same table because we like things to be symmetrical, but with different decorative items. So remember, symmetry is very important in design, especially when you have a, a his and hers or a right and left to bring things that are cohesive, that are going to blend beautifully into this room. The homeowner has a collection of very important gifts that she has received over the years from family and from her wedding. And instead of sprinkling them throughout the house, what we decided to do is put the collection of these traditional pieces in a very modern cabinet for her to enjoy and for people to look at and for her to remember those special moments. So as you can see, we chose a very modern cabinet. It's a beautiful um, wood cabinet with glass. And inside, we have some of these special pieces. Some of these pieces are 
very, very old actually. The silver is very, very old. And instead of having them in the house, what's really great is that we're able to put them on display in a fun way, especially the larger items, maybe on their side, maybe just sitting in a grouping and really capturing the essence of these pieces without making the house look too traditional. Curtains are a very important part of any room. And in this living room, it was very important to bring height into what is a traditional home that perhaps doesn't have as tall a windows as it should. Considering it was built somewhere in the 50s and 60s, what we wanted to do was elongate these windows in the house. And so you will see that the window height is fairly standard, but our curtains go all the way to the top. You mustn't um, limit yourself by the height of the window. One great trick in design is to take the height of the curtains as tall as you possibly can. We chose a beautiful white linen. This is actually an off-white linen, and it is really fresh and really ties in well with our sofa. The client sourced a beautiful heirloom vintage 1930 Steinway piano, which is truly breathtaking. And this baby grand has to make a splash in this room, so we gave it always the corner spot. Pianos are um, a little tricky when placing them in a room because they are so large. And if you are lucky enough to have one, and this client was lucky enough to source such a beautiful one, you wanna make sure that your piano is always placed in a corner so that it is protected from the ray of the sun and from getting bleached, as well as having the sound of the music echo throughout the room. With the piano being matte black, it was important to bring a little bit of that element of the piano into our artwork. And considering our client loves modern art, we found the perfect pieces that really matched beautifully and had the power that the piano has. The piano is a very empowering piece, so the art that is against it must be equally powerful so that they work beautiful together. Thank you for joining me today on this episode of Red Elevator. It was really fun taking you into one of my projects and giving you a sneak peek into one of my clients beautiful homes in future episodes we're going to do just the same thing on other projects whether it's new construction or complete gut remodels or just for instance a living room design so thank you again for joining me remember to subscribe below give it a thumbs up so that I can continue making these beautiful videos for you and I can't wait to see you guys again next week